This is DJ Sky. Keep it locked. Yes, yes, people. DJ Sky, back on it once again. You are here for DJ Sky's insights, which we have a look into, a throwback, may you say, into previous tunes from dubstep, drum and bass, and UK Garage, where we have an in-depth look into what made these tunes stand out and be a testament of time. This one, ladies and gentlemen, is for the dubsteppers and it is not one to be messed with. This one holds a personal um, personal memory of mine where back in 2005, 2006, this was in a event from DMZ, who are a dubstep label, and... Guys, I'm just getting a bit choked up talking about it now because when I heard this tune, it literally broke down barriers once again in its genre. And it was at the beginning of the dubstep movement, which I'll tell you, back then, when I was collecting records, vinyl records, this is, it's, it literally really lit my passion for vinyl. When this tune came out amongst all these different bangers, it was literally banger after banger. It could have been from Digital Mystics, Coca, uh, it was Koki, uh, Mala, Casper, Roscoe, early, early dubstep, where it was only a group of, uh, a, a certain group of dubstep producers making hit after hit after hit. And this one really did stand the test of time. This one, ladies and gentlemen, is Lofa the Goat Stare. I would like to scan all of you in this room, this room one at a time. I must remind you that... You can feel the dread already, right? You can feel the dread already in this track. It is a scary track, okay? The yeah, scanning experience is usually painful. Sometimes resulting in nosebleeds, earaches, stomach cramps, nausea, sometimes other symptoms of a similar nature. There's a doctor present, Dr. Gatineau. Right, this sample here is from 1981 Scanners, which is a, a, a mad film within itself. But you know how 80s horror used to do back then. This guy decided to be like, look, I need to take these samples and put it onto this, onto this tune. It was literally gold dust. And what dubstep continues to do well is take samples from everything, whether it's TV, music, um, films, adverts, anything they can get their hands of, they will take it. And it would just give the tune an extra gloss of atmosphere. I know that you've all been prepared for this, but I thought I'd just remind you just the same. Uh, my personal experience with this tune, I was, as I said, at a DMZ event. This was about 2006, even though this tune was released in 05. But I didn't get my ears. I didn't lose my ear origin to this tune until I was at this event. DMZ. Digital uh, one thing. No one is to no leave this room. room. Mallow just finished his set. Everyone was buzzing. Koki was next in line, because that's who Digital Mystics are, for anyone that doesn't know. And he put this tune on first. I'll tell you, the atmosphere in this place changed. I mean, it was, it was dark, it was dang anyway, but this one... This was like a meditational vibe I've never heard in my life. I must remind you that the drop. scanning experience is usually painful. Right, this was in a sample. Uh, sorry, this was, in, <laughs> this was in a warehouse when it was first um, played to me, right? In DMZ, they played in a warehouse. Guys, when I mean it was rattling about this place couldn't handle the bass there was what, about four massive sub um subs yeah subwoofers there were subwoofers turned on its head to face the ground it was i've never seen anything like it when i got to this place and everyone was so chilled out obviously smoking a pipe 
uh, smoking a reefer. Uh, but, you know, everyone kind of added to the atmosphere. And this tune. That half beat you can hear, which is a distinct thing of early dubstep, guys. Okay? You're now going to hear the first drop. And when this starts thumping, it starts. It, it, it penetrates. But the second drop now. Sometimes other symptoms of a similar nature. And this is why I love this genre, right? Because you have to be, no offense, a bit tapped to like this type of stuff. <laughs> you need to be a bit, you have to have a bit of darkness in your head, man, because this stuff, it, you can't be like some normie that be like coming from, you know, mainstream music and just be all from bro step, which started to come out like late 2010s, well, early 2010s, sorry, and all of that. You can't, because this one, you need you need the darkness to handle it. You know what I mean? It's, it's so, it taps into every aspect, into what made dubstep a standout genre when it was first released. Right, so this is going to build up to the second drop, which, in my opinion, makes this tune. The uh, scanning experience is usually painful. painful. Can't go wrong with this. This is a brilliant tune from Lofa, I tell you. It's the samples as well that do it for me. It's just a sprinkle of gold dust, and it turns this tune from a 95% into a 100%. I know that you've know that you all been prepared for this, but I thought I'd just remind you just the same. Ladies and gentlemen, hear this second drop. Guys, when I when that bit was dropped, okay, people were hyped on this tune anyway, yeah? There was lighters going up, people were nodding hard, yeah? People were doing trigger fingers, gun fingers, all of that. But when that second drop happened, the whole place got absolutely shook. There was like, it overtook everyone's mental capacity, yeah? Everyone started swaying. The head nodding wasn't so aggressive. Everyone was just feeding it hard. I remember just, just taking it all in because the atmosphere just went complete it done a complete 180 and just you could soak up every little thing this tune was giving every little thing it was so majorly groundbreaking for its time this is 2005 we're talking about yeah where grime is pretty much everywhere and yet i think this actually came out of grime this this new dark age where it was a combination of dub elements and the kind of their leftover what grime was coming to because grime had its dark moments as well but this was something else this was like a meditation it was a meditation of dubstep which is why i've also in the past named my my dubstep mixes like um asylum dubstep or dubstep asylum because it, that's what this these type of tunes were giving off that it was some type of therapy <laughs> There is one other thing. No one is to leave this room. Rewind on that. No one is to leave this room. It doesn't get any better, I tell you. I've got the sub going and it's just thumping away like nothing. Or even some good uh, headphones would do as well. Now, as we do on the, our insights, guys, we have a look into what other viewers 
other listeners have said about this tune. And these are taken from back in the day, but I think they highlight exactly what feeling you get from listening to this tune for the first time, okay? So let me just make the screen bigger. Oh yes, Discogs to the rescue. So, as I said, 2005 this was released, guys, okay? The goat stare. Uh, I must remind you that the uh, scanning experience is usually painful. Oh, painful, 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 painful. It's just oh, so dark. Anyway, the goat stare was side B, root was side A. And <laughs> if you want to try and get this track, guys, on vinyl, it's £65.90p. Oh, my days. Yeah, not surprised in the slides. So we're going to go to DJ Roden first, who uh, posted this back in 2015. So he says, Sample and Ghost Stare is from the 1981 sci-fi horror Scanners. Classic horror references are sprinkled throughout the dubstep catalogue. No doubt about that. Pos- uh, possibly a reflection of each artist's love for the amazing genre of cinema. A fellow underground, just like dubstep itself, classic sci-fi greatly influenced the impact the synthesizers had on music today and a reference to the genre of films uh, a an appreciative nod in that direction and once again yeah it was uh, it was an influence it was a a combination of uh, different media coming together and creating something completely just something else entirely it really is uh, so Mr. Fad the introduction sample on Root. Okay, so this is featured on Root, which is the A side, guys. Yeah, features Sir Connor uh, Coxon Dodd telling how he came up the idea to release his own records. Okay, the sample snipped not for publication, and a dub plate is voiced by Alton Ellis. Both samples can be found on a Studio One Story documentary released by the Soul Jazz label. So if you've got, uh, obviously the the people that have listened to the a side which is root the sample from that uh that's basically what he's describing where it's from so uh big up to mr fad on that one uh so zane of caldor uh this one says classic loafer tunes that carve out his incredible dark and unique sound and he really was pushing the torment the kind of dubstep torment and a lot of his tunes back then he really was in a way in his own lane because uh, not a lot of people were doing that. I think Digital Mystics kind of touched on it here and there, but they were going for more, more they were trying to go and steer it in a different direction, but Lofa was straight line. He knew what he wanted to do. So the scanner sample just works perfectly as we scan by the base. Oh, that's a good anma- um, an- analogy. I must remind you the scan experience is usually painful, which is obviously a sample used in a tune. Uh, so this one here, Fury Phonics, which I think gives the best representation on exactly how this tune makes a lot of listeners feel, artists feel, DJs feel. Okay, so this guy has really gone in depth and I'm just going to read it word for word because he pretty much falls in line with how I view this tune as well. So Root is a good tune, don't get me wrong, which is on the other side. But Goat Stare on the flip is dubstep taken to another level. As with all genres, dubstep has profiliated into a, a many-headed beast. But this comes from an era where 99% of dubstep singles were almost literally groundbreaking and helping to lay the foundations for the Bemanoff that now provides singles with retro synth pop acts and is played on daytime Radio 1. And uh, yeah, that pretty much sums up why um, dubstep was in its own lane. It was experimental, but it was a groundbreaking genre for its time. And when I look back now, I was in college. I was in college um, and I was exposed to this stuff. And, you know, college, you don't know what type of man you are. You're still going from teen to adult you know, you're still trying to figure out where you you want to go in life. And this genre hit me at a time where I was pretty much my most exposed, most vulnerable. And within that, I found a genre that was contemplating and connecting with me on how I was feeling about my situation. So 
I totally ag agree with that. Ghost Stair manages to stand head and shoulders above most of those 2000, 2004, 2005 tracks. It really is a masterpiece and highlights Lofa's skills, not just as a bass mechanic, but a perfect oil of intricate yet subtle rhythms and someone with a keen ear for a great sample. Um, once again, dubstep artists, and I know samples have been used in other genres as well, but this one, this this genre really does make it hit kind of uh, it makes it hit a bit deeper than most because of the beats that are connected with it it's very dark stuff you know as i've said before as most pe people know the samples taken from david cronberg's scanners more specifically the scene where telekinetic or telepathic scanner demonstrates his abilities to a crowd a scanner warns the viewers that they may find experience a painful one. And this is a sample once again, people. Sometimes leading to nosebleeds, earaches, stomach cramps and nausea and other symptoms of a similar nature. Lofa has knowingly used the sample as a platform to describe what his track is capable of doing. In the right environment, say DMZ. See, I told you, DMZ was the place to be if you were exposed to dubstep. It was literally the place to be. You had all the great artists with all the great tunes. And remember, it was only a certain circle of dubstep producers at the beginning here. And they had their fingers in a lot of pies, I tell you. So you can imagine a bass on this track more than capable of exploding in the listener's head. No doubt about that. The intro to the track appro uh, appropriates the echo and reverb aesthetic of dub. But the drums throughout the intro, uh, sorry, the drums throughout the uh, tune are more tribal, more ethnic for want of a better word. They have that half step lurch, but the wood blocks begin their tattoo and kind of jungle funkiness. Ala shy FX is felt, and then the bass drops, and oh my god, the bass drops. Now, I'm not sure if he's talking about the first bass or. Sorry, the first drop or the second drop, because the second drop, in my opinion, makes this tune. It really does. The the thumping that happens in that second drop is just that's that's an asylum right there. That's a <laughs> a dubstep asylum right there. It's so meditational. It it takes you to somewhere that you may not want to go mentally. So sub bass is prevalent. Uh, nowadays it has already been morphed, mangled, wibbled and wobbled and worked out that more often than not we take for granted as listeners. When I, when I first heard Goat Stare, it was like discovering acid for the first time. It was a complete what the F moment, breathtaking, awe-inspiring, jaw-dropping, insert relevant cliche here. And it's the guy has summed it up exactly how I feel about the genre. And why it keeps delivering even nowadays, because dubstep has obviously gone through transition, you know, as with many genres do. But it still kept that rawness still, you know, it still kept that rawness. And I think a lot of people are still pushing out the boats. The stuff I listen to today is, is on another level. But, you know, we're talking about the dubstep origins of this tune and... It was a, a spiritual meditational event. The whole dubstep, or you know, origin of music really was. And it, you know, as we know, it comes from dub and reggae, and it's more with what the UK were doing at the time. And it once again, highlights why the UK really was a stepping stone to some of the best music genres that the world has seen. No doubt about it. And we need to be proud of that, actually, in, in a small bloody island. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, I like this tune a lot. The structure, the sample, the rhythms, it really is a masterclass in dubstep production and deserves to be remembered as one of the tunes that paved the way for the slew of producers who are working nowadays. Completely agree. And for those who want to be inspired to produce. Beautifully said by Fury Phonics. Big up to him. Guys, this was Lofa, the Goat Stare, one of the most important dubstep tunes to have graced this planet. 
and two of Grace's genre, it really did open certain doors that, okay, where can we take, how dark can we take dubstep? How dark can we take it? Because this one set off, when I think about it, Digital Mystics, uh, which was, ah, uh, is it, I'm trying to think, Hollow something, which takes a sample from uh, American Psycho at the ending when Patrick Bateman's just um, narrating to himself and there was a lot of people going that route and this tune was the reason for that. So big up to everyone that listened, big up to everyone that liked and sh- subscribed. Thank you very much for coming through and listening to this insight. We'll be back with more insights, more mixes, more tune in the weeks, tune in the mixes that is, and more compilations. Big up.